Welcome back to this series of maintenance videos. This part six is mostly about refurbishing and modifying the lower rudder bearing. In the previous video, I had dug a hole to drop the rudder into, made special tools to remove the rudder bearing, found the actual JP3 bearing in quite a sorry state, and started the cleanup and evaluation process. In this video, I deal with some nasty corrosion, install new seals, and make several modifications to the rudder assembly and finally get it all back together again, like new. And in between rudder activities, I reassemble the fittings on the boom. This is the bowl. It all sits there. It's been a lot of water ingress on the outside, particularly on this O-ring slot. I'm not sure this O-ring slot is gonna be viable anymore. It looks pretty bad. And the way it's set up, this is the only damn thing in stopping the seawater coming up the outside. I don't like it at all. I managed to clean it up pretty well in there, which is the important part, of course. On the back here, we've got some serious, serious corrosion pitting. Again, it's all exposed to the sea. And I'm not quite sure. I mean, I can fill those in with epoxy. That's not a big problem. The problem is, this o-ring slot here is just not good. I'm trying to see if it's viable or not as an o-ring slot. So the good thing is this needle file fits exactly where the o-ring slot's good. Exactly in flush, so I know I've got to get back to that. That's pretty good. If we go too deep, then obviously the O-ring is not going to seal on the outside. Okay, so I've cleaned up the O-ring slot. I'm not that happy about it, but then I started digging into these little white holes here. And look how deep they go. A galvanic corrosion filled full of oxide. <laughs> Feels like I'm going to war. Look at it. I mean, that hole is not supposed to be there. It's amazing. Look. The screwdriver almost gets lost in it. So I'm kind of thinking we might probably need a new one of these or see if I can get these holes welded up. But the root cause of having this exposed to sea has got to be fixed. So we'll be in the same place again in a few years' time. You see, where the salt water hasn't been, it's, it's beautiful, but where it has, it's just... Well, where it's being exposed to the sea so it can have galvanic action, it's just appalling. So, now I've got everything cleaned up and cleaned out. This is where the bottom seal sits, the only seal. I was thinking of making this bigger to put another seal in, but I'm not so sure now. I think I favour putting some sort of padding or even just butyl in there to seal that gap. The question is, will butyl last underwater or not? Uh, little pits yesterday, but I think I'm going to put epoxy in them. But before I do that, I'm going to just drill and make sure I've got all the powder out. I feel like I'm a dentist drilling cavities before putting fillings in. So I've cleaned it up and I've masked to make sure I don't get epoxy in the O-ring groove. This is just a nightmare to get out. And now I'm just going to get some acetone in here. Clean it up. The thing about acetone is it just evaporates so fast. Right, drill, you've done your job. Now, I should have probably got some epoxy with aluminium or zinc filler, but I didn't have any, so we'll just have to use this, which I'm pretty sure will be fine. Okay, let's mix it up. 
almost feel bad putting epoxy on this beautiful piece of engineering. Nice thing about this 610 epoxy, it's a very nice consistency. You don't have to thicken it to make it stay in place. Yet it's thin enough to just give a very smooth layer over everything. I can't send this back to the steering guys now. They'll say, it looks like someone has been drilling holes in this. Uh, yeah, well actually that was me. The thing is, for once in my maintenance career, this doesn't need to look pretty. Okay, that'll do for a first pass, I think. So I've got my new sander here. I'm quite pleased with it, look at it, it's pretty neat, eh? So. Love this okay, it's all sanded smooth now. On the bottom here, it seems to be pretty good. There's a little bit of a dent there. Just using my fingers to feel, but everything else seems to be pretty good. I'm going to, seems this came out so well. Of course, we lose the anodizing, but um, <laughs> When we've had the pitting, we've lost the anodizing anyway. So I'm going to do this bit here, I think, because I quite like the way it's come out. That o-ring groove, though, is not going to hold unless I do something about the pit holes in the bottom of it. So, do I get my screwdriver, dig them out, and put a bit of epoxy in there. So I've finally finished sanding all the epoxy here. There's no major holes. And what I intend to do is where this meets the housing i am going to put this o-ring which i purchased from master car that fits perfectly i'm just going to put it down inside and just make sure it sits properly i think with that and a whole bunch of teff gel around it should seal it way better than this o-ring here which is obviously completely shot so this is an interesting example of the sort of modifications i'm finding that we need to make this bowl, which the bearing goes in, sits in here and to lift it up is almost impossible. So smartly, JP3 put four screw holes here. So once you take the eight screws out, you put these screws in, screw them down and lift it up. Now what's not so smart is that this is just glass fiber. So when I screwed these down, guess what? They just punched holes into the glass fiber. I got it up eventually but the screws are going down faster than the thing was coming up. So what I'm going to do is I've drilled these holes that I made <laughs> bigger uh, and I'm going to put screws in them so that it's got something hard and metal to screw down against. So I've got some um, 610 epoxy here in a syringe, which is quite good for putting stuff in holes like this. Of course, when I put the screw in, it's going to go absolutely everywhere. Well, let's just try one and see what happens. There we go. We know for a fact, then, that that screw has got epoxy all the way around it. I never need to screw that out again. It's just going to stay there and be metal. And with the countersunk hole, there's no way uh, the screw is going to push down past it. quite like this little idea of putting epoxy in a syringe. I've never done that before. Somebody told me that from the Halberg Rassi forum, and I thought, that is a damn good idea, especially when you're filling holes like this. Thank you, whoever it was. I think it was you, Dennis. Dennis Foster, that is. Dennis Foster. Dennis Foster, come to the front, get your prize. Well done, Dennis. Just use a cloth to wipe off the excess. Doesn't matter that there's not po enough poxy on the screw head because the screws aren't actually going anywhere. They're just sitting there so that this has got something to screw down onto. Okay, voila. Okay, here comes the next modification for the um, JP3 bearing bowl. I just found that these bolts that secure it down are just going into glass fiber. So that means that it's fine when you put it in the first time, they just threaded it in and made some threads, but now I've got three of them are spinning. So I'm gonna put in some helical coils so they've got some actual metal to grip onto 
rather than um, glass fibre which is just going to rip out every time after a while. First thing to do with helical coils is drill out the holes. And sure enough, it was just into glass fibre. Okay, before I go too much further, let's check to see if I can get a thread in there and it's all going to work nicely. Now, helical coils are really supposed to only go into aluminium or metal, but in this case, I'm going to put them into this glass fibre too. At this point, I'll just take it off and just take it out by hand to make sure I don't damage the thread because it's going to be quite sensitive with glass fibre. Okay, there's my red Loctite. Now let's hope this goes in okay. Come on, little one. Come on, in you go. In you go. In you go. That's it. Sometimes you have to talk to tools. Talking to tools definitely makes them happier. I have no doubt. All right, let's just make sure that helical coil is below the surface. And what do you know? Perfect. Okay. Right, I'm going to put you on time lapse because you don't need to see everyone. This time I cut the threads by simply putting the tap on the drill and running it in at a very slow speed. Okay, so that's done. We now have eight nicely helical coil holes, which is much better than straight into glass fiber. Okay, that's it. It will be installed. So I'm about to do something very silly. So don't laugh. We can laugh if you want this move. I'm about to put some soundproofing paint underneath this back aft compartment because we get a lot of uh, water slap and it gets a bit annoying so I bought this years ago never used it I see now it's approaching its sell by date I've got everything clear in here so I'm gonna go and give it a go mining torch on long reach thingy. This is the dangerous bit. Getting in there without spilling this. I don't know. I've got my coveralls on because I know I'm going to get covered. I'll see you later. I've just about perfected the technique for getting in. Okay, here we go. GoPro, stop video. So you may wonder where I've just crawled into. Well, there is a cavity underneath the aft locker floor, which acts like a drum when the water slaps on the stern. It's this cavity that will get soundproof paint treatment. I said it's this cavity that will get the soundproof paint treatment. Did you hear that? So I've just uncovered the protection I had on the thread of the rudder stock. That's the rudder stock. And this is where I had the locking screws in. And you can see, again, it's a bit of a stupid design. The locking screws go into the thread. So I'm actually going to drill that out uh, and then clean up this thread, because otherwise it's just going to keep damaging them. And the aim would be that I go at exactly the same height anyway for the rudders I had before. So I am going to drill those. It may seem a little bit unsavory. That's what we're going to do. So many things to avoid. Now these holes, they're for lock screws to stop the thread from undoing. So 
The lots of roofs are actually small in that. Now looks, that looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? But once I've cleaned that with Wana's best toothbrush, it's gonna, oh dear, it's gonna look, sorry Wana. It's gonna look much better. In fact, I'm gonna do it with acetone just to make sure it's thoroughly clean. And then I'm gonna go in with a needle file just to make sure all the edges are rounded. Needle files, man's best friend for threads. Here I am gently filing each thread with a triangular needle file, removing any burrs or sharp edges that may cause galling when we reconnect the rudder. So I've done the filing around the hole. Now I'm just going to whip around with a wire brush and make sure it's perfectly smooth. Okay, I didn't want to wire brush too much. It was just to sort of round off the edges a little bit for maybe get rid of my file marks. But now we've got a nice deep hole for my uh, locking bolt to go into with a conical bottom so I can sharpen it. It's dead smooth. I also had a little bit of a burr on the thread up there. This thread is so fine and the whole rudder hangs on it. So you really have to be very careful when you're putting it back on. There's no way you can judge the weight of the rudder to start that first thread you've got to put the top thread down on it jp3 say that you just gradually raise up the rudder and start that thread that ain't happening it's just too fine so i prefer to bring the top bearing down on it and then lift the rudder and engage the top bearing on the ball i don't know if my technique's right or not but it seems right with me determined to actually say that I've started the boom today, I have slid the goose back into position. And at this end, I have slid into position the main sheet. And this one is the um, shiv wheel that goes inside the boom. There'll be a shiv wheel on the end of that. Before I do any of that, as usual, there's always a before. I'm just going to clean this slot a little bit because there won't be chance to do it otherwise. And particularly around where this defunct LED is going to get ripped out of. And I've got some nice fancy LED strip to go in there. Well, the LED strip's not fancy, but the housing it goes into is. So, a bit of cleaning before bedtime. The sun is just dipping beyond the trees and as usual I have no clue what's happened to today. So I'm trying to clean this glue off very very gently with a chisel being very careful not to dig the corners in so it's a matter of just getting the exact right angle. Not that it matters much because this is all going to be below the new light anyway. But just don't tell the new owner, I actually scratch the bit. Oh, sorry, sorry, did that go in your face? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll try not to do that again. Oh, damn, I forgot. Sorry, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, let me wipe you down with acetone. Oh yes, that's better. That's nice and clean up. Perfect. So now I'm drilling and tapping these holes for these bolts to go into. Now, it's not actually correct. This is supposed to be slightly bigger than the bolt. So that uh, there's no tap in there and the actual screw is in here. But um, I like them to be extra secure in here if I can, even if it means graunching them in. There's nothing lost. There's any slight movement on there with the bang, and you do get a lot of movement, these holes get elongated. And because of that, we had to have them welded up and re-drilled because they were getting like very oval. The force on this bang is quite something. Oh, so I'm going in with an M10 tap. I should probably use a little bit of oil, but 
tapping into aluminium is so easy. So finally the boom is in the shade out of the sun. I just put this main sheet securing in. I've got a PTFE washer under there which isn't really necessary because that's stainless steel and underneath I've got HDPE and here I couldn't get anything because I couldn't get this out but I've filled it full of lana coat so this is the jibe preventer slot the jibe preventer comes out of here and goes up to the bow so while we're here I have two potential jibe preventers these this one here which runs to the front of the boom and secured to the mast and then I put two new eyes on here uh, so that I run I wanted something that was a bit more outboard uh, and on a long passage I'll run these right to the very bow cleats and then back to the cockpit uh, we have prevented the jive with these before so we know they're pretty good okay folks this is where the fun and games start. I am going to attempt putting the balls into this boom track. we will probably end up with a lot of swearing, particularly with the camera in the way like this, but I'll give it a go. I've got a lot to put in here. Okay. This is going to be fun, ladies and gentlemen. Needless to say, they all came out and we're starting from square one again. It normally takes three or four times before I finally win the battle, the battle of the balls. Sorry you missed the excitement. Anyway, it is on and to show you how slick it moves, watch it when I lift up the boom. Okay, traveler, demonstrate. Have I got the end on the other end? Yes. Great. So, that's the boom pretty well done. Well, I've got the little light still to do, the LED. Uh, and then it's just getting the damn cylinder inside, which the kit is arriving from Sweden, the proper kit. Uh, that's arriving on Monday, so we should have it in, and the boom will all be done. Okay, so we're at final stages now, starting to put things back on the rudder. I'm going to put this uh, lower seal, which is the only seal that keeps the seawater away from the bearing. I've filled it full of this nice Selden waterproof grease and we shall try to get it in. You would think it would go the other way up, but actually it, the, it's got to stop against water pressure from below and when the hull is bouncing it up and down, that's where the pressure can potentially come into the bearing. From the yard, in a scrap heap, I found a nice piece of thick plywood and I've cut it into a circle exactly the size of the seal because it's very important to get this seal in evenly knocking on the edges, not the middle. See how it goes with my rather big knockometer, but nice and soft. Ooh, that went. Done. Cool, let's have a check. So something happened with a GoPro in that last one and I've had to reformat the disc. Anyway, that seal went in just fine and now I'm going to show you my cunning plan for sealing this off. So originally we had this one O-ring around here, this black one all the way around there. But somehow it got damaged when it was being installed and end up squished up the side. So I've got that O-ring, a new one, but I'm not gonna trust that. I put another O-ring here around this upset. And in addition to that, I am going to lay this O-ring in here, something like this. It's not gonna be a seal as such, but it's going to be used to hold back a sealant. I'm gonna seal around here with 3M4200 and I just want this o-ring to make sure that the sealant's not going to go too far in otherwise we'll never ever get it out. With it like this I should be able to just come up and cut it to be able to retrieve the bowl out of the boat. That's the theory anyway. 
let me show you what's actually going on inside the bowl and you'll see how that all fits. So this is the bowl, which you've seen countless times before. It's all nice and clean. So that O-ring, the original one, sits just here. I'm going to seal that one in, so that one's a new one. The O-ring I've added is gonna sit just in here. I have put 4200 here just to make sure we've got a good seal around the edge. And then the extra O-ring is going, to, this is the hull by the way, the extra O-ring I'm gonna put in is gonna go right around here, about four or five mil back from the edge, and I'm gonna fill that edge flush with 4200 so that water cannot get up and around the back here like it did before. Last time I only had that one O-ring which was damaged on installation. Now it's gonna have 4200, an O-ring, an O-ring, the correct O-ring that by design will be there. I don't think water's gonna be coming in there this time. So hopefully no corrosion and the fact that all the aluminium will be covered now, we shouldn't have any galvanic corrosion either. So let's put it in. Just as a reminder, this is what the bearing housing looked like when I first removed it. And this is the poor state of the O-ring groove after 12 years with no effective seal. And this is a schematic showing the modifications I'm making to ensure no water ingress between the bearing housing and bowl and hopefully seal off the aluminium from any further galvanic action. So these are the balls which go into the bearing. I'm just giving them a very, very light sanding with 2000 wet and dry. I mean, it's hardly doing anything, but make sure to shine it up and get rid of any imperfections on it. I went over it very, very lightly with 400 first. At the end of the day, it's just plastic, so you need to be careful. Okay, beautiful. Good as new. Ready to go back in. Yeah, waterfall like porcelain. So I've just been debating with myself whether I put this in first and then put the bearing in, or put the bearing in, and then put this in. Anyway, I shall put grease on the inside. I've got some nice type B2 grease. JP3 later told me not to put grease between the ball and the housing. Their reasoning is that the Ertolite ball is self-lubricating against the aluminium. So first off, we have these metal rings that go in the bottom here. Let's make sure some nice grease. Okay, so that goes in there. Comsa. Okay, you watching carefully, children? Now, quadring is a little bit tricky. This it seems to be a bit too big, but doing it like this and pushing it as it goes in seems to get it in okay. There we go. Quad ring is in, beautiful. All right, that's that one done. Let's get this sleeve in. More grease, more grease, more grease. Not that this goes round, the bearing goes round inside this. So this is more just for corrosion protection. The bearings are gonna go in here, so I'm gonna have plenty of grease in here. Plenty, this is where we really need lots of grease, because these bearings, needle bearings, are gonna be spinning. Every time one touches the wheel, they'll be all over the place. Spinning. Okay, so we've got one bearing in there, We're nicely greased off. Now let's get the next one. I would say we have a fairly substantial layer of grease there. Yep. There it goes. Waterfall. Waterfall. Booty, booty, booty for. Now I shall add some more grease into this just before we pull the rudder up. Let's just 
just this ring and the seal. I keep looking around, it's pretty good to me. Grease in there, grease in there, grease in here, grease everywhere. Just try and gently get that down. Gently grease around it. Beautiful. And that, as they say, is a finished JP3 bearing. Um, just before we complete the reinstallation, here is a reminder of the modifications I've done. Note the green aluminium primer that I painted all over the surfaces I repaired with epoxy. Okay, so we're back in here again. I've placed my O-ring here, about three to four millimeters back from the edge so I can get that 4200 lip in there. I put Tef gel around here because if corrosion does start, Tef gel should help stop it like it does on the rig. Okay, the big moment. I've got grease all the way around the edge of this baby and it is going in. Let's just pray it goes all the way in and down and seats properly. Okay, before I knock it in with a knockometer, I'm just gonna make sure I get all these bolts in. Come As I get down to the last few millimeters, I tighten the bolts there. in a sequence such that the bearing right. sets down evenly all around. It is definitely in. Okay, we have Tef gels, all the screws in. There isn't the single, can even get a gnat's hair in there. And we're greased up, ready to drop the bearing in. This is the big moment. How the hell do I do this efficiently? Do I just drop it? I don't think that's a good idea, is it, really? Oh! 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 King Al. Jesus Christ! I don't think that was the way to do it. Well, it's definitely a damn good fit in there, isn't it? Now, are we lined up or not? That was not textbook, that's for sure. If this is the top of the lower bearing. I just put two seals in, one that side, one that side. We were confused about why there'd be two on the top and one at the bottom. The answer is because Halberg Ress is more concerned with the boat sinking if we have a leak into the rudder. In other words, two seals at the top to make sure it doesn't, rather than the rudder flooding, hence one seal at the bottom. Which makes sense really, doesn't it? I mean, you don't mind the rudder flooding, well you do, but if that means the boat sinks, that's serious doo-doo. Uh, overkill as usual by Halberg, but that's why they are who they are. I've just bought this anti-seize thread, which looks pretty dodgy. There you've got big fine threads like this. This is the grease you need. Otherwise you can get into really deep doo-doo because if these lock up you are in trouble double trouble now it's a challenge to get this bloody thing started okay i think we've got to say i'm going to go left till i feel it click there and then we're going to go up that's nice now one of my special tools, 10 millimeter drill. And the second special tool, just to make sure we've got equal pressure on both sides as I'm turning. Okay, baby, in you go. In you go, all the way. Don't start thinking about stopping now. So this is the last part of the lower bearing. And of course, all my markings I had to make sure I did it up exactly the same place again have gone. Yeah, it looks sexy, doesn't it, eh? Helical coils, backing screws, new seals, sexy greasy bearing. Holy Van Dooley. This is good. Shiny. 
beautification grey. What more could he want? What more could a girl ask for? I think I'm going to change the bottom of the berth here to be Sifu Perspex so I can look down on this every night before I go to bed. Because I think it's quite pretty. And it's an engineering masterpiece. Well, it is now after all the modifications. I'm not denying JP3 made a good job. It's pretty nice. But I did the modifications. Let it be remembered. And as for beautification, there's no way anybody beats me on that. Not even wanna. So I think for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Because I've got a feeling they're gonna say, leave it a little bit loose to get the rudder through, make sure it aligns itself properly, and then tighten it down. Now the question is, can I undo it even more than that manually? Let's pretend the rudder's through there. Oh yeah. Okay, I think we have a game plan. I'll tell you what, I can lift the bloody rudder now, except I've got to do my fancy sealing around the bottom. That was quite a marathon. Just change the seals, right? Yeah, just change the seals. Yeah. Okay, so now you can see the bearing on the outside. But I want to put this 4200 in this gap right here. You see the o-ring about four or five mil back, which is where I wanted it. That is the easy bit. The hard bit, the hard bit is going to be getting the sealant in there without getting it all over me. Okay, I'll start with what should be the hardest, which is here. This is where you want one of those decorators who can just go around with silicon sealant making it look so easy to apply in a neat bead. Mind you, if that's all you do all day, you should be good at it, right? Good thing is, I don't need neatness. I just need thoroughness. No one is going to see this bead, except me when I take the rudder off again, which is hopefully never, never in my own ship. And when I do, I'll be putting a knife through it, so... Right, we're done. Okay, there we go. It's a bit of a mess. Oh, that white pot you can see is a yoghurt pot. Just a salt dust blowing up there. But you can see here, hopefully, that bead is completely in there. Yeah, i got it all over here as well, but the bead itself is in. The blue there is the main seal, and the white is the bottom of the uh, ball. So I think it looks pretty good. Well, it doesn't look good, it looks a bloody mess, but in principle, I think it'll work pretty good. That's what I meant to say. For anyone still confused what we're looking at here, this annotated photo might be helpful. Time for the runner to come back up again. This is my five to one block and tackle going through the hole down there and outside we have Ray today should be much easier this is a greatly sped up video as we lift the rudder back up into the boat Ray is lifting with the ratchet strats to the aft deck cleats and I'm on the inside pulling on the block and tackle to see how I lift it from this end. Right, it's just about an inch, Ray, so... Um... You probably can't hear me now, can you? It's worth mentioning that if the mast had been up, this would have been a much simpler operation using a halyard led through the aft hatch, then back to a winch. Okay, so let's put this up. Might as well go. Okay, coming up about an inch. So 
So the rudder is in. I've cleaned up. I've put the locking bolts in there, lock them up so that this cannot turn. The woodruff key is in. So I'm going to put in the quadrants now for the auto helm. I've not been filming much this afternoon, but I have put in the linear drives, port and starboard. I have wired them in at the back and put them into um, tubing so they're all nice and neat. So that's it finished in here. We've painted up through here into the dreaded cavern with soundproofing paint. We'll see how that goes. And the rudder, of course, the star of the show here, has all new seals. And now I can load this area back up. And look through here now. I have my bedroom back. I have my bed back. I can't wait to get into it. Wonderful. And now that the rudder's up, it's time to repent my sins and refill my hole. I have to say, I'm almost sad to have to fill in my beautiful hole. I mean, it was so well dug. Absolutely perfect, I'd have to say. Here we go, load number two. So with the hole all nicely covered, you wouldn't even know it was there. Look at it, it's perfect. This should get me onto the yard duties. We are turning our attention to this piston from the boom out hole. In the next video, we finally get the boom complete. I rewire all the pedestal electrics and add a dimmer switch and USB socket. We had the diesel tanks professionally polished. I changed the hydraulic oil for the furling system. I removed the exhaust elbow and clean up the turbo. Make a shoot for the anchor chain, repump the glass locker, and quite a bit more. Thanks for watching.